Latest from the National Football League, the Miami Dolphins reportedly have announced they will be sticking with quarterback Tua Tungavaloa for the remainder of the 2021 campaign. However, the team would not rule out the possibility of a trade for Deshaun Watson before Tuesday's deadline. What we do know at this point is that the two teams have reached a agreement in principle. They've laid the baseline of what's going to happen. Uh, reportedly, it's three first-rounders going to Houston for Watson, uh, which considering the, the Texans turned down three first, uh, a second, and two-thirds not that long ago, I guess this is a moral victory for Miami. I mean, they're, they're not exactly giving away a, a small bag of Skittles to a trick-or-treater, but, you know, that's three first, but I guess it could have been worse. Uh, but we do know Stephen Ross also wants the legal issues that Watson is facing to more or less be settled before a deal is made. Uh, Watson has had some kickback to that because he feels like a settlement would be an omission of guilt. Um, but he may have softened on that stance. We know he wants to go to Miami. Um, so what what I'm suspecting, and this is just spit spitballing here, just uh, taking a stab in the dark, because I really don't have a clue what the fuck the Dolphins are doing. I haven't for a long time. Uh, but my speculation is they're going to trade for Watson. They're going to allow him to take the remainder of the year to get this settlement under control and to get this these, these 22 civil suits taken care of and, and then roll with them in 2022 and hope that Tua drives his trade value up. Um, there's the other side of that coin. What if Tua continues to develop and look like he has the last two weeks where he's put up some productive numbers? Uh, and, you know, I know the Dolphins have lost them both, and, and I know they were against two shitty defenses, but what if Tua continues to play at that level and turns out to be the quarterback everybody thought he was going to be uh, coming out of Alabama? I guess that's a risk you're willing to take, and if that does happen and he starts showing he's at Tua, I guess you could probably get a low first for him rather than a second and, you know, some other throw-in pieces. But uh, I, I will give Tua a ton of credit here, man. He has handled this with the utmost of professionalism. He has been a consummate pro throughout all this. Look, this guy's been handed a shit sandwich from day one. A coaching staff that never gave him an opportunity and never believed in him. Just constant turnover and, and bullshit that, you know, frankly, was too much for any developing quarterback to handle. And he's gone out there and shut his mouth and did the fucking job. So my hat's off to Tua. Whether he's a Miami Dolphin again after this season or not, I don't know. But I, I wish him all the best wherever he winds up. Part of me wants to see him not make this fucking deal and, and just get in a GM and a coaching staff that knows how to draft and develop talent uh, rather than throwing Tua to the Wolves. And using this draft capital that they're giving up to surround him with talent, whether it be on the offensive line or on the defensive side of the football, maybe a running back, uh, you know, I'd love to see that. I, I just, I don't think it's going to happen. And I know there's a lot of risk with Tua still with the injury history. And frankly, Deshaun Watson is who everybody hopes Tua becomes as a football player. So who knows what's going to happen from there. Uh, other side of the coin, the city of St. Louis reportedly could receive up to $10 billion in a winning lawsuit against the National Football League. It looks more and more likely they're going to win this lawsuit. So bank on this. Mark my words. You will be seeing a professional football team, and I'm not talking Vince McMahon's uh, uh, XFL or some other upstart spring league that's going to disappear in six games. You will see an NFL team back in St. Louis before 2024. I am fully vested on that. I mean, and, and just look at what they could pay. I mean, you put in an expansion team and you waive the expansion fee and you even kick in up to 90% of a stadium. Hell, you could pay for a full 100% of a stadium for St. Louis and it still would be substantially less than what they would win in this lawsuit. Um, and that's what I think is going to wind up happening. I think that the city of St. Louis is going to get a team. I think they're going to have the expansion fee waived. I think they're going to get a substantial amount of money thrown their way to build a new stadium. I'm going to say at least 75% or more. And I think they're going to get an ironclad lead pipe lock, legally locked in, stating that the team cannot leave for at least 50 years. And before people say, well, can St. Louis really support an NFL team? Lest you not forget that this team had a consecutive home sellout streak that lasted from 1995 to 2006. They will support the team. This team, I mean, this city had over 30,000 people a game come for Vince McMahon's abomination of a football league. St. Louis will support a team if they are given stability and given a chance to. 
So you're getting football back in St. Louis. I'm thinking it's going to be an AFC West team. You get the natural rivalry with Kansas City, possible rivalry with Denver. So you're seeing a team in St. Louis again, and to me, it's overdue. And oh, by the way, Stan Kroenke's days in the NFL as an owner are done. They're finished. Now he's talking about trying to skirt out of paying the owners of legal fees, which he agreed to do so when they jumped on board with this lawsuit. So for the city of St. Louis, this may be the ultimate win-win. You get a team back. You get Stan Kroenke out of the fucking league. This is a win across the board. Anyway, that wraps it up for this, folks. I will talk to you again soon with more news, rumors, and rants. Take it easy.